to help people yeah. transact sales. Mm-hmm. Uh, but equally, we will get new investors asking. And there's always this perception that people can't buy at auction unless they're full mm-hmm. cash buyers. Yeah. Now, I'm concerned that's not true legally in terms of buying off. But like I said, I don't know if you can tell us a little bit about if all yeah. the options yeah. there are for finance sort of generation. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it all boils down really to the type of auction that you're buying through because some are more flexible than others. Um, so essentially, when, when you buy at auction, the anticipation is once you've sort of agreed that, that, that purchase, you have exchanged contracts. And there will then be um, a period of time when they expect the client to complete him. Um, so in theory, that's completely possible and plausible, but there are, there are spanners that can be thrown in the works. And if you're getting a mortgage um, or any sort of finance, then you're not the only one that's got a card in that game, really. And lenders can therefore stipulate um, certain restrictions or decline properties or decline to lend based on restricted covenants and all sorts of legal re- uh, legal reasons that might not be apparent at the start of, of you searching around and finding this property and, and sort of going for it at auction. Um, so what normally comes at an auction is a legal pack that people can view when they uh, see a property at auction that they fancy. Um, and that legal pack can be looked through by a, a buyer's solicitor to make sure there's nothing onerous in there that would restrict a bank from lending on the property. Um, once you buy an auction, however, and you need to uh, arrange the mortgage, if a surveyor goes out and deems that property unmortgageable for whatever reason it may be, then the lender could just refuse to offer a mortgage on it, in which case you've exchanged contracts and you're legally bound to it and you'll lose a deposit and potentially more fees as well. Um, so if there's going to be a mortgage in place, People can do it, and it, and it's it's a stretch sometimes with timing. But the more work you get done up front before the auction, then the less problems you'll have going through to complete. And but that will mean putting money where your mouth is essentially, because you'll have to pay a solicitor to look at the legal pack and make sure there's no restrictions in the titles uh, and there's no uh, covenants that would stop mortgage lending for whatever reason. Um, and you'd have to get pretty much a mortgage offer up front to arm yourself with as you enter the auction so that a valuation has been done on the property, the value has not got any concerns about the lender offering a mortgage on it, and the case has pretty much gone to offer on the strength then that you have got that money ready to be able to complete and that legal work's been done. So it means doing a lot of work up front and also um, you know, spending money in, in order to get into the auction and potentially not even win the property ultimately. Um, One of the other ways around it is to look at bridging finance, which is designed for this exact purpose. Um, And this is where you're almost starting two applications off at the same time. Um, You you would arrange your bridging finance ready for the auction um, or slightly after the auction, um, a way of arranging short term finance from a lender that has less questions to ask less stipulations with regards to mortgage conditions uh, and bridge of finance is designed to actually get you the money very very quickly and for these types of scenarios so it could be where chains are broken down or you're buying at auction um so the bridging finance then will be set in place to allow you to complete in that sort of period of time that the auction is set, be it 28 days. So th- those sorts of timescales are completely achievable in bridging land. Um, and then the exit strategy, because bridging finance is expensive and um, you don't want to be having it hanging around for very, very long. So you need an exit strategy of a remortgage to take out the bridging. So it allows you to complete in the timescales that are dictated to by the auction. Auction, but then the exit strategy is to leave the bridging finance and have a, a more longer term finance option in place would be a buy to let remortgage and then that's what we would do together so the two applications would run on together excellent no that that's really and i think that's a fair reflection actually because you're right there are some risks to purchase in that way. Um, yeah. certainly patterson's that we partner with their legal pack is extremely robust and yeah. We always encourage people to 
review that up front because really this is the auction model isn't it a lot of the work that would be done at the back end in a traditional sort of transaction is pulled up front um, but the reason i explore it, you know we know there are opportunities for investors in in yeah. that auction method yeah. of purchase um but again people will say i can't have you know i'm not full cash i don't know so nice to just to, to sort of alert people to the fact that there are methods of finance and that that are, that are viable and will work. I think the important thing is, is to identify the property before the auction and to have everything in place ready to, to go in. So you're not winning the at auction and then trying to get the, point with the mortgage advisor to sort of discuss things straight away. Uh, the, the number of times we've had phone calls from clients saying, oh, we've had a, you know, we've been successful at an auction property last Friday um, and we've got a, a 21 day completion, you know, and nothing has been done to sort of get a mortgage offer in place or look at bridging finance or anything at all. Um, so the, the key is to sort of really have everything ready and have made all your inquiries like you say Andrew have got a solicitor look through the legal pack what one of the areas of, of concern that we've come across recently with auction properties is the management fees for um, sort of having having the property and what those fees are and also within the the, the covenants um, what the increases to those management fees can be now on the face of it you wouldn't think that that was something that a lender would have have a concern about but you'd be wrong it's it's a really sort of key area of criteria in terms of what the management fees are and and what the uh, potential increases can be and whether they're capped in any way shape or form um, so things that you might not necessarily think would be an issue and most of our clients would just be thinking is that property property habitable is it is it rentable does the rental yield cover those tend to be the things that clients think about in relation to the mortgage criteria but there is much more that goes into it so having that knowledge up front and being able to provide that to your mortgage advisor is really important yeah i guess it's an interesting point because any management fee affects affordability doesn't it so immediately it, be, it needs to become part of the equation yeah and also saleability so if anything went wrong and a lender had to repossess a property if there's a whopping great big six thousand pound management charge to pay people might not be queuing up to want to buy those sorts of properties and um, so it's all about the sort of future saleability as, as well as affordability in the short term if if helpful just for any potential investors who were sort of online certainly patterns that we operate with is as much as it's an auction model i think people picture the old-fashioned auction if that makes sense they picture the physical room with the hammer and um, obviously this is more of an online process but it's almost become hybrid so we are finding that buyers are having conversations with the auctioneer patterson's in this case they're then doing as you suggest some of their research in the background and it is that tentative process where they're, they're doing the due diligence Mm. They're tentatively bidding and speaking to the auctioneer, yeah. and quite a few transactions that you know we've passed to Patterson's recently have been, have been agreed almost on an offline basis, a bit like a traditional estate agent negotiation yeah. model. Yeah, and it does, yeah. it does allow for that other work to happen in the background. So I guess it's just to open up that opportunity in people's mind that sometimes they'll see an auction advert and think I can't, you know, I can't look at that opportunity. Yeah. Um, but I think I'd encourage people that they potentially can. You know, if you're right, if they get organised, um, yes, it is it isn't often a hard and fast that have dropped online, and you, you know, a lot a lot of people are having conversations mm -hmm. with physical people at Patterson's and sort yeah. of slowly bidding. Um, yeah. So it, it certainly can be done, but that's useful to know about finance options because regularly yeah. that question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 